name is Wesley Flock, and I'm a technical consultant with GlideFast Consulting. And today I'll be covering a legal service delivery demo. The objectives that I'll be covering here in this demo will be a description about legal service delivery. I'll cover the out-of-box applications associated with it and some of the practice areas. I'll walk you through a few use cases for an end user, a fulfiller, and a manager. And then lastly, I'll wrap up with important features of the application. Okay, about legal service delivery. ServiceNow has defined their legal service delivery set of applications as a unified experience between the employees requesting legal support and the legal team serving them. So overall, legal service delivery will help you track legal requests with self-service experiences, increase practitioner productivity through the use of the Legal Counsel Center, and we'll explore that UI here in just a little bit, and it will also allow you to gain insight into legal demand and trends with real-time reporting. For the out-of-box applications associated with legal service delivery, we have legal request management, matter management, conflict of interest, digital forensics, simple contracts, stock pre-clearance, counsel center, virtual agent conversations, and the mobile app. And you can see there that I have a star next to legal request management, which just indicates that legal request management is at the core of all of the applications beneath it. So you need to have that installed in order to get anywhere else with the rest of the applications in legal service delivery. For the practice areas, there are currently about 18 practice areas available out of box. And I've just got a few of them listed here. Compliance, corporate support, ethics, government affairs, labor and employment, litigation, mergers and acquisitions, patents, trademark, and trade secrets. Now we're going to transition over to our first use case with Nicole Robinson. She is going to submit a request for us. Okay, so as you can see here, we have impersonated Nicole Robinson. We're going to go down here and select service catalog. We'll expand here on the categories. And as you can see, we have a handful of requests out of box to choose from. We have conflict of interest disclosure, content review, digital forensic request, general legal request, non-disclosure agreement, privacy assessment, and stock pre-clearance. For this demo, we are going to choose a non-disclosure agreement. On the form that loads here, we have the title and description of the NDA form. We scroll down, we have some fields here. We need to supply some information to specify the request that we want to submit. We're gonna choose vendor. And for the purpose, we're gonna to say to protect sensitive data. For the company, we'll just choose Amazon. Leave the address is null. Choose the United States. Choose a date in the future, and we have to add an external signatory. For the sake of this, we will add myself. So we'll say Wesley Flock. My title will just be Legal NDA Lead. And for my email, I use my GlideFast email. Let's add. And here we see my information populate here. Now, if we wanted to, we can also add attachments for any relative data that may be uh, relevant to the situation, but we're not going to add anything for this. We're just going to click submit. And as this processes and makes its way through, it will eventually end us on a page that just shows the status of this request. You can see here we have an overview of just the details for this request. We have a preview tab, which is a preview of the document that contains some of the data that we just provided on the previous page detail some of the signatories that are required to approve and process this. Again, it lists the signatories involved. We have an activity tab that lists the activity that is conducted while this request is being processed, and we'll cover that a little bit more later as well. Here we can add attachments after we have submitted the request, and here we would also be able to view attachments that have been submitted. Lastly, we view the request details tab which allows us to just see the various bits of data that Nicole had entered in when she had submitted this request. So with the request being made, we will now transition over to the Council Center, which is a workspace where Susan Foster will work out of. 
and she will process this request. All right, so we have now impersonated Susan Foster and loaded the Legal Counsel Center. And the Legal Counsel Center is a workspace that just provides a graphical interface for fulfillers to view unassigned requests and assigned requests and to work them as they would intend to, to process this request. On loading the Counsel Center, we have been brought to a landing page that contains some widgets with unassigned matters and requests, any pending approvals, tasks to do, and any requests or matters that have been assigned to, in this case, Susan Foster. So we're gonna go into unassigned requests and we're gonna find the request that Nicole Robinson just submitted. And it's here at the top. And on clicking this case, it's gonna load a record page that contains the details and some other activities that we can work through here to process Nicole's request. Here on the left-hand side under the details tab, we have the details of the record various bits and pieces of the record, but most importantly, we have a section down here at the bottom that contains the variables of the data that Nicole had provided. So this will allow Susan to reference this in order to become informed on what the status of the request is. Here in the center, we have Compose, which allows Susan to log information pertaining to this request and how she has worked through it. For work notes, it is private, which means it's just internal communications between herself and anybody else who may be accessing the record. And then the comments tab here allows her to communicate back and forth with Nicole to exchange information should the need arise. Down below here, we have the activity stream. And this just records all changes, whether it's over here under variables or general contract support, or if it's any additions made under work notes or comments. On the right-hand side here, we have what's called council assist, and it can provide catalog items and knowledge related information to assist Susan through completing this request. We'll go back up here to the tab. So we just discussed details for approvers. This would show anyone that needs to approve to process part of the workflow associated with this request. Any applicable task SLAs, documents needing to be revised, and the two signatories that are currently assigned to this request. So from covering here, we will now jump over to Dominic Collins and we'll view the dashboard that shows some of the reporting information based on available requests and matters logged within the legal service delivery application. Okay, now we have impersonated Dominic Collins, who is a manager in the legal service delivery space, and we have loaded the dashboard for legal operations. Here we have two tabs for open requests and matters and trend analysis. So first we'll take a look at open requests and matters. Here you can see we have a few widgets across the top for open requests, unassigned requests, open matters, and unassigned matters. And matters are just escalations of a request that require an expansion into the rest of the company to include other departments in information gathering and rationing out whatever the request may be. We scroll down. We have a few widgets for open requests and open matters, open requests by assigned to, and open matters by matter owner. Under trend analysis, we've got some more reporting features here. Here we can see open and closed requests per month, open requests and matters per month, requests this year, matters this year, knowledge articles viewed, and top 10 knowledge articles viewed. So this wraps up our use cases for legal service delivery. Now we're going to wrap up with the few additional features that comes with legal service delivery. So for the important features that we have for legal service delivery, we have edge encryption and access control separation. So here in this image over here on the side, for edge encryption, ServiceNow likes to emphasize that any file uploaded here into ServiceNow on the customer premise is encrypted, transmitted over to ServiceNow's infrastructure, where it is then continually encrypted and rested there so that you have complete item security on any files that you send over to store in your instance. 
We know this is very important in the legal space because we want to keep that information tight and secure so that nobody else can access what they don't need to see. And this also plays into the access control separation where back where I discussed the practice areas, those practice areas also come with their own set of access controls so that only those that are assigned to those controls and practice groups can only access that data so that anyone who is not required or supposed to see this information cannot see it. So you have proper separation of viewing of your sensitive data. That concludes this legal service delivery demo. Thank you very much for viewing. And if you have any questions, please contact Glidefast Consulting.